Hi, my name is Liam Taylor. I hope you enjoyed my little intro there, and today I'll be taking you through the process of installing one of the coolest new gizmo packs I've ever come across, the Nuke Survival Toolkit, and how some of the features can be used to create some of the most common staples in VFX editing, lightning. Well, what is it, and who made it? The Nuke Survival Toolkit was created in September of 2020 by Tony Lyons, a former lead compositor at Allura and ILM, who has worked on such films as Thor Ragnarok, Kong Skull Island, and Star Trek Beyond, and most recently worked on Black Widow at Tricks to VFX. As Tony describes it, the Nuke Survival Toolkit is a portable tool menu for the Foundry's Nuke, with a hand-picked selection of Nuke gizmos collected from all over the web, organised into one easy-to-install toolbar. Most of, if not all of these Nuke gizmos can be found on Nukepedia, a free online repository of over 1,000 custom Nuke tools which can be downloaded individually as needs be, but Tony has made a selection of more than 200 Nuke gizmos that can be accessed whenever you need something cool. Why would we want to install the toolkit? Well, if you've ever used Nuke, you know that to create cool effects, you will need to merge, blend and combine your nodes into a complex network to achieve this. One of the effects we'll look at, the X-Tesla tool, was built from 99 individual nodes, which as you can see here, is a bit of a mess to look at, and would be very confusing if you had several of these in your nuke script while editing footage. What these gizmos do is essentially consolidate all of those complex 99 nodes into one simple tool, which not only looks better, but feels less overwhelming. Well, where do I get it, and how do I install it? The Nuke Survival Toolkit can be downloaded by clicking the link I've provided in the description below, or by following the links on Tony Lyons' blog, compositingmentor.com. Simply click the link to the GitHub page, download the zip file, unzip the contents and place them into your .nuke folder which is located here on Windows PCs under C Drive, Users, Your Username, .nuke. You will now need to edit your init.py file within this folder to include the file path of the toolkit. This is so Nuke knows where to find the toolkit. If you don't have an init.py file, you can easily create one in Notepad. Now you can launch Nuke, and if you see this little Swiss Army knife in the corner of your shelf, you're good to go. Once you click on the toolkit's icon, at the top you will see documentation. This will open a PDF, which acts as an index for every tool in the kit, with some information on who made the tool, where it can be found, and how the tool can be used. All the different tools have been sorted into easy-to-find categories, which mirrors the layout of Nuke's default tool. Image, Draw, Time, Channel, Color, Filter, Kia, Merge, Transform, 3D, Particles, Deep, CG, Curves, Utilities, and Templates. So navigating the toolkit is a breeze. Now let's locate the tool I mentioned earlier, the X-Tesla tool. Here, we can see the tools created by Xavier Martin, with a link to his website, where it is on Nukepedia, and a brief explanation of what the tool does. We'll now have a bit more of an in-depth look at the X-Tesla tool, as well as a have a look at a few other interesting tools, such as the Spot Flare, Noise Advanced, and Halation tools, which is a tiny selection of what the toolkit has to offer. I'll see you shortly in Nuke. Firstly, we'll need to read in some footage I've already formatted to HD1080. So let's press R for read and import our backplate. We can see a young and very handsome man doing his best impersonation of being a wizard. Now let's use the X Tesla node to give him some lightning magic. Press tab, then start typing X Tesla, or we can come over to the toolkit, go to draw, then X Tesla. You can see it has created two points, a beginning and an end, which we can move around the frame to change its trajectory. So let's place the first point where the graphics tablet pen slash magic wand is, and place the second point out of scene to make it look like he's trying to hit something. You can play with the settings here if you like, from changing how many main bolts of lightning you would like to see, how crazy the amount of application the waveform has, whether you want it to have a soft or harsh look, the frequency of the waves and how complex they can be, and how wide you would like your effect to be. For example, Having one bolt of lightning with zero branches and little to no amplitude creates what could be used as a solid blaze for a lightsaber or any kind of other off-brand energy laser sword. However, that's not what I want to go for, so I've changed my lightning to have three main bolts, five branches, with a medium level of frequency and width. Now, since I don't have a tracking marker to automate the positional animation of the lightning, I'll have to manually track the first point to my hand. We can do this by coming over to the base tab of the X-Tesla node, Right-clicking on the animation menu marked by the squiggly line next to point 1, and hitting Set Key. 
I'll now have to go frame by frame and manually change the position of point 1 on every frame, so bear with me for a second while I quickly track this. Now that we've tracked the X Tesla and made the footage look much better, I want to quickly go over a few of the other useful gizmos that come included with the toolkit. Keeping in mind, this is a tutorial on how to install the Nuke Survival Toolkit, and not a tutorial on how to make lightning effects. I will make another video in the future that is a full length tutorial on how to make some awesome looking lightning, but for now, let's just introduce some of the nodes I've used. The Spot Flare node, created by Mads Hagbarth Lund, creates a lens flare effect, with some flickering animation. I've used three of these as masks to create additional lighting by first copying the tracking animation from the X Tesla and pasting it into the positional information of the spot flare so it follows the lightning, and then adjusting the angle and gain, adding a slight blur, feeding it into a Kia node, and using that key as a mask for the backplate. The Noise Advance node, created by Tony Lyons himself, is pretty self-explanatory. It's a noise node with more advanced controls. I've used this in combination with the X Tesla node and a glint node to generate some small, randomized flashes, and used a noise advance node in conjunction with a merge atmos node, also made by Tony, which has a merge for smoke, dust, and atmospheric effects, so I've done just that and created some small amount of smoke effects. To add some tweaks to the lighting, I've used a glow exponential node created by SpinFX, a halation node from Tony Lyons, and a default Nuke Godrays node to make a few adjustments. The Glow Exponential node allows me to recolor and adjust the glow's falloff. The Halation node allows me to tweak the RGB values and my black and white points of my luminance, and the God Rays node to add additional lighting and blur effects. And lastly, to polish it off, I've used a Luma Grain node, made by Luma Pictures, to add a little film grain, which I think brings it all together nicely. All these tools come with the toolkit and can be used to really tweak and refine your effects. And if the wizards are not really your thing, then you can use these cool tools to turn our handsome man into a Norse god of hammers, or even a masterful guitar virtuoso shredding away at lightning speed. I hope this has been an informative and useful guide on how to install some interesting tools, and how you can have fun by playing around with them. Special thanks to Tony Lyons for compiling together such a neat little package of gizmos for free and sharing it with the world. I've been Liam Taylor, thanks for watching, and happy compositing!